Hi guys, hello, another video for you all. More content with my Quest headset. Following on from the last video, I was trying to help people that had a Plex media server enjoy their TV shows and movies in VR. We're now going to take things to the next level, uh, and that's aimed to have the ultimate virtual cinema experience. So it's one thing to watch films in VR, it's another to watch 3D films in VR and get that 3D effect. Quite another to have the feeling of your own virtual cinema, but what we're missing is that surround sound experience. So we want to make the most of everything we have. You might have a sound bar, or you, like me, might have an AVR, and you've got speakers around you, above you. You'd like to make use of Dolby Atmos and the DTS X uh, audio soundtracks. So to do this, unfortunately, we need more than just the Quest 2 headset. So this Skybox VR video player isn't going to help me. In the last video, I did talk about uh, virtual desktop very quickly. We kind of glossed over it because I said for many of you, there's probably not a lot of point. It would be a waste of electricity just to have a PC running to play the video to send it to our headset. When I showed there's many different ways of doing that on the headset itself there's no need for the PC what's changed today is I need to get that DTS X that Atmos sound into my AVR or your sound bar so we can enjoy the speakers around us so of course I've got a PC which is hooked up by HDMI into my AVR that then has a HDMI that goes out to my LG OLED television so people in this room can watch the flat screen and I can enjoy the VR experience and, and have a cinema screen uh, and be a little bit selfish we can do all kinds of tricks we can with virtual desktop use the pass through cameras so I could still see people in the room and still have a large screen and I can get up walk out the room go get people drinks not miss any of the film any of the sound come back into the room uh, it's, it's kind of crazy the world we live in now so those of you that don't know about uh, virtual desktop there's plenty of videos about it lots of people use this to do PC VR gaming uh, on their Quest headset we're not going to play games we're just going to play videos so forgive me if I don't go into too much detail uh, as I don't want the video to be longer than it needs to be so we have the app that we buy on the Meta Store. we install that on our Quest headset or your Pico headset and then we have a companion app that we install on the PC I'll link the the virtual desktop website uh, in the description of the pin comment below so you see I've put my oculus account in uh, we go to options so I've set audio streaming and I've set it to VR headset and computer to do both and that's fine I don't mind that sound goes into my VR headset because I can just mute it turn the volume down until it's off what's important is the computer sound that's going to the AVR to give me the surround sound now we do have a tab here for videos so you could add these in but again it's kind of fruitless and pointless in that yeah we can play them in virtual desktop but again it's going to put the sound into the VR headset we don't want that we want it to go into our surround speakers in the room so we don't really need to mess around with that so let's just bring up our controller we'll do the menu button so we can see we're connected to my computer we've got a choice of environments if you want to do the pass through cameras so you can still see what's going on in the room and have a large screen just keep in mind running those cameras as well as the screen is going to burn the battery a little bit faster but there's plenty of environments here we can mess around with uh, we've got our input so I've turned off hand tracking because if I have to lift my hand up to adjust the headset slightly I don't want it bringing up you know graphical user interfaces uh, interfering with the film we've got our settings so we're auto connecting it says use optimal resolution I've done this deliberately to help you see in this video I don't actually want it to do that I don't want it to change my monitors resolution because I could have other people in the room with me trying to watch the TV in 4k I don't want it to be less than 4k to match what's going on in the headset hopefully that makes sense I want everyone in the room to enjoy the flat screen as much as I'm enjoying uh, watching films in VR so we can adjust some qualities to help battery life it's all pretty self-explanatory uh, we've got the streaming tab so the type of graphics card that you'll need remember we're not trying to play games it's not going to be as demanding uh, but yeah many people favor Nvidia cards because of its NVENC encoder 
what's on the display is getting encoded and sent over Wi-Fi to our headset which then decodes it so we've got some settings you can tinker around with there's the videos tab so we could play things here but as I say we're not going to get it through those surround sound speakers there's not a lot of point so we're still on my PC desktop I could use these touch controllers to interface with the PC but I'd rather just use the mouse as I can so what we need to do is make sure we're set up for uh, the sound so if you're on Windows 10 or 11 we go on the Windows Store and we can search for Dolby and you see there's Dolby Atmos uh, Dolby Access sorry DTS Sound Unbound and we've got some MPEG extensions codecs that you might want to install if some of your videos aren't playing correctly now someone's going to say you don't need to do this because you're doing HDMI pass through but it's good practice to do it on your PC because you might want to do some flat screen gaming play Halo Infinite Gears of War what have you uh, some of the Forza Horizon games uh, they support Dolby Atmos so for that to work we need to get this set up so get these things installed we can open up Dolby Access. Now some people get a little bit confused by this because it says try for seven days, buy for £14.24. That's only if you want to do Dolby Atmos through stereo headphones. We don't. We're going to skip this. So it's given an example of a game, The Hunter Call of the Wild. I play this. It does Dolby Atmos. Go hunting. I can hear ducks quacking over my head as they fly over. It's very immersive. It's very cool. What I want to do is head over to Products. So we're not doing headphones, we're doing Dolby Atmos for Home Theatre, which is free. So we do the setup. It says, please turn on your Dolby Atmos device and connect via HDMI to your PC. So whether it's a soundbar or an AVR, we will continue. So it's detected at the moment I'm using headphones with my PC. It's not set up as the default uh, for the AVR. So we'll go to our audio devices. So yours could look a little bit different to mine. It, I've got LG TV SSCR2. What's important is it's coming from the NVIDIA High Definition Audio. So that must mean the HDMI from my graphics card is going to this device. Yours might say Denon or Marantz or uh, I don't know, might say Sonos. I don't know. Depends what your equipment is. But we just need to make sure we're selecting the right device. It's warning me that it is not the default audio device. To use this option, it must be set. So we can go to the settings. There's my LG TV. We've got the little arrow to the side. We just set as default sound device. It is default for audio. We are now pretty much all good. So we can minimize that. Now we can start worrying about how we're going to play our movies, whether it's 4K or 3D. Now we could just use VLC Media Player. This is very simple, it's free. Uh, you don't have to pay for it or you know any kind of subscription so we can just open up a file that we have of a blu-ray that we've backed up play it and you'll notice in the top left hand corner my webcam is pointed at my AVR and it should be saying uh, Dolby Atmos uh, uh, Dolby True HD so that's lossless uh, surround sound so I'm just going to pick up the controllers because you'll notice that it's not realized this is a 3D format so I'm just going to take my controller point down click so we get this interface come up now we see this is over and under this is going to really get us the best picture quality it could be side by side so you have half on the left half on the right but we, we know we want over and under that's merged them together now and you're not getting it sadly but I do get that 3D effect which is incredibly cool so we'll turn that off just so I can make sense of the interface and we can stop it. So yeah, that's quite easy to use, uh, but it's not the end of the video because maybe you want to be a little bit more flash. Maybe like me, you do have a Plex media server and you would like to use Plex so we can have the Plex client on our desktop. So as we open this up, so I can pick any user I want really it doesn't matter we'll do our arrows to enter the full screen mode so what's important is that we set up Plex properly to get the sound working so we're going to go into the settings
we're going to go down to the player so it says normalize multi-channel audio reduce volume to avoid clipping when converting from multi-channel audio formats so yeah we don't want it going too loud that speakers can't handle it so that's fine we'll uh, we'll leave that enabled we don't want exclusive audio enabled we don't need that but the audio device yours is probably set to auto select you don't want this we want to manually set whether it's our uh, soundbar or AVR so I know I want the LG TV I want my audio device to be HDMI audio channels we can leave set as auto but all these pass through options for Dolby Digital, Dolby Digital Plus, DTS and so on we want all of those checked providing our AVR uh, or soundbar can support them so we've got use hardware decoding this is all good we can save those changes important that we save them now rather than play another film what I'm going to do is just go into my Atmos demos and we will do the Dolby test tone 7.1.2 so I will give you a link to help you download this never try to watch Dolby Atmos demos on YouTube because you're not actually getting the proper sound so this is why we're going to download the file and and play it uh, locally so we're going to play you should see in the top left hand corner that it's going to say uh, Dolby Atmos, Dolby Digital Plus, which is fine. We're just going to test our speakers out, make sure everything's working properly. So this is a 7.1.2 test tone, but my setup is actually 5.1.2. Five speakers around me. The point one is my subwoofer, point two are my two height speakers. Now we can see a speaker gets highlighted in yellow, and that will be playing pink noise. It would sound like static. So I need to make sure that the speaker that's lit up in my setup is making the noise as we play the video and as we skip through it will go over to my front right we'll check that now we've got my center speaker which is nice to have if you're sitting off axis uh, that can really help you hear dialogue it's not necessarily essential but it can really help you set up we'll eventually end up with a subwoofer that's given us our base we get the rumble uh, it really does make it feel more authentic more like a cinema experience and then we eventually get to this side speaker now I don't actually physically have this in my setup but what's going to happen for me is my front left speaker and my surround left speaker which is to my side and behind me they both play together to image the sound to my left it creates a phantom speaker is it as good as having a speaker there no but it's better than not so it will eventually move over to the right side surround which I also don't have so again it will be my front right and my uh, rear surround both playing together to give me that side audio and it will go to my surrounds we'll make sure that they're hissing and making a noise and then we go up to our Atmos our height speakers so these are showing as top middle of the room but maybe you've put yours as uh, front heights you've put them up high on the wall above your front speakers maybe you've put them in the ceiling maybe you've mounted them to the ceiling maybe you're off on your side walls about halfway down the room up on the ceiling doesn't really matter but we just need to make sure that we are getting that static sound now some of you might have a more advanced setup and you've got four speakers in the ceiling so what's going to happen for you just like those side speakers you don't have a top middle speaker but you've got one top front you've got one uh, top at the rear so they're going to play together to image the sound in the top middle just like that side speaker uh, phantom side speaker works at ear level and then it will go over to the other side and if you've got a pair of speakers over there they're both going to play together to image that sound top middle if we did a Dolby 7.1.4 test tone it could test uh, each four of those speakers in your ceiling independently but it's important that we test this and make sure everything's working right because it was driving me crazy uh, I was getting an output of Dolby Atmos but it said LPCM uh, and the films just didn't sound right which is why I came to do the test tones and what I was finding is when it came to the static for my height speakers that noise was actually coming through the surround speakers the, the surrounds played correctly their test tone but for some reason it was throwing that Atmos sound into the uh, surrounds behind me as well which is obviously wrong 
So doing that HDMI pass through, we've resolved that. I'm getting all my speakers working correctly. And now I've got this bubble of sound to enjoy with the movies. So we can stop that. We can go to 4K films just to show. Let's do well, let's do Battleship because I know this is uh, DTS HD Master Audio. This is DTS X. We can resume this. Doesn't matter where from. We'll give it a second, and then you're going to see in the top left hand corner of the video, my AVR is going to change again. Instead of Dolby Atmos, now we're going to get DTS X MA. So I know I'm getting the lossless digital theatre sound so that's awesome we're pretty much covered so it wouldn't matter what it was uh if it was dolby digital plus whatever it is whatever you've got uh, whatever your surround sound format is we can uh, get that played on our surround sound speakers so before i leave you all some of you might have noticed that in 3d films i've got tomb raider so it's kind of flash doing it in plex because we can see the blurb for you know what the movie is about we can see the box art we can see the actors i can click on them see what other films they've been in um if i own their films we can go watch them uh, but it's telling me that the quality of what the file is the movie is and it's telling me that i've got this as true hd it's dolby atmos but some of you be saying wait a minute the 3d version of tomb raider never came with dolby atmos you're right it didn't so what I've done, because we're backing up our Blu-rays, I've backed up the 4K Blu-ray, which had the Dolby Atmos, and that's given me one file. And I've backed up the 3D Blu-ray, which has given me another file. And I've used software called MKV uh, Toolnix to multiplex the files together. So we drag one of the files in, so it will show the video file it will show all the audio tracks the subtitles and so on they will be in green and then i drag in my other file which is the 3d file and then same thing and they'll show as blue so i can untick what i don't want so i know i don't i want it to be the 3d version i untick the green videos and i just keep the green audio which is going to be that dolby atmos and i push the button multiplex it together magic happens and i've created my um yeah super super 3d blu-ray so another example would be gravity with uh, george clooney and sandra bullock the atmos soundtrack only came on the diamond deluxe copy whatever it was uh, 1080p on blu-ray the 3d version of gravity was dts you didn't get dolby atmos so if i've got both copies i can merge them together to enjoy the 3d effects and also have the spatial sound all around me so backing up blu-rays uh, multiplexing all of this stuff is out of the scope of the video today it's just to let you know what is possible when we have pcs and we have this we've spent this money on this equipment we might as well get the most out of it so doing all this stuff for a vr headset makes a lot of sense tvs nowadays uh, aren't really embracing 3d anymore yeah we can get projectors that still do it but they're incredibly expensive so if you already own a vr headset to play games let's just you know use it as we've got it to enjoy 3d movies and have our own virtual uh, cinema screens so we'll leave the video there guys hopefully it's helped you out have a great day have a great evening whatever it is you choose to do after watching this and as always i shall see you when i see you next ciao for now